Hey, everybody. Welcome back from the long weekend. Have a couple espressos. I know it's going to be a long Tuesday, but it's also going to be a big week on this week in startups. Great conversation today. And we're also going to talk today about the Minions trend where everybody seems to be going from TikTok to go see the movie Minions and Suits. Really interesting. We'll talk about TikTok, how it's sort of changing marketing and all that. And we go on a little diversion to talk about hooks in songs, which seems to be a key part of what's happening on TikTok. And I went down the rabbit hole. It's called Harmonic Surprise. We're going to talk about that on today's show. He's just a music fan, people. He's just a music fan. But it yeah. turns out we are being manipulated in many different ways, including the music. Also uh, on the TikTok hook, no pun intended, we're talking yep. about its changing plans for its e-commerce business and why the West maybe isn't ready for live streaming QVC. We're also going to talk about the CHIPS Act and energy independence and just maybe some reframing of the big issues that America is dealing with. I have some thoughts and feelings on it, and Molly and I chop it up at the end of the show. Finding consensus. It's going to be a great show. Stick with us. This Week in Startups is brought to you by Notion is one place for notes, docs, projects, and everyday work that goes way beyond a wiki. Go to Notion. Dot so and use promo code twist to get $250 off an annual team plan. Squarespace. Turn your idea into a new website. Go to squarespace.com slash twist for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code twist to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And masterclass. Learn from the world's best minds anytime anywhere and at your own pace get 15 percent off an annual membership to masterclass at masterclass.com slash startups all right hey everybody welcome it's tuesday i hope you had a great july 4th how was your weekend molly it was good it was actually a great weekend we reunited with like old school friends that oh. my son's been and then just ended up having the whole weekend together oh how fantastic yes yeah. i'm up in uh, ah. tahoe for Summer. It beautiful. Were you on a float? I was literally on a float. How so do you a friend do this? Of, yeah. So I'm just like, somebody added me to a thread of like, you know, tech people in Tahoe. Yeah. You know, it's like a dozen people. I was people. like, for God's sake, he's already the king of Tahoe. It's been a year. No, 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 no. It's six months. I <laughs> Anyway, so somebody is like, are you, who's going to the parade? I'm like, well, yeah, tell me about the parade. They're like, yeah, 10 to 12, you know, goes down Main Street. They've been doing it for a hundred years. It's like classic July 4th parade. I was like, Oh my God, I totally want to go to that. I asked my daughters, hey, you want to go to the parade? They're like, what's a parade? You know, like it's, it's like a new concept. Um, and they know what a parade is, but they were like, I don't know, you know, they've never been to one. Aww. So we went to this like main street parade, but my friend was like, we have a float. Do you, do you, do you and your daughters want to ride on the float? And uh, it was quite cute float. It was like rolling down the river float. So everybody was wearing like, uh, you know, uh, you know, tubes that you go down the river with. Oh, and, really? Uh, yeah. And it was water themed and. Then uh, it's oh God. delightful. You go down Main Street. Everybody's got American flags, and you're just like, "This is America!" And you're throwing candy. It was delightful. It was a delightful weekend. So that's wonderful. Happy uh, July Fourth, everybody, and still the greatest country in the world, despite all the problems we are talking about, <laughs> uh, <laughs> especially on a Monday or Tuesday when all the news is built up. But it didn't seem like as crazy as a news weekend as we've had. People shut it down. I think, other than some horrific events at 4th of July events, which sucked. But I think for the oh most God, part, another the news, shooting, yes. I mean, you know, it's like, how awful do you have to be to target what exactly what you were talking about, which is those wonderful celebrations for years and years and years. Yeah. I would go to Red Lodge with my family, actually, my um, aunt and uncle have a cabin there. And we would always go to the like, the Red Lodge 4th of July parade is mm -hmm. just the greatest. It's just exactly that. Like, yeah. it's so small. And then there's like horses and Anyway, the, yes. The well, news no, I mean, I, I, it, I'm i literally at that parade. And then later that night, I found out about the tragic yes. shooting. Uh, and yeah, I did not mean to buzz kill us. That was like a total like, hmm. well, no, I mean, it is a. But we should I mention mean, it so that it doesn't seem like it. we don't know because Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it just it keeps happening. And we're making modest changes to the laws around guns. But yep. it's feels I, you like know this what? is. I feel grateful for my family and my lovely fourth. Like, that's all I took away yeah. from that. It's just like, I feel grateful. We had a great time. Yeah. And uh, I don't know yeah, what else to keeps, say. Yeah, it just keeps <laughs> happening. And we seem like we're not able to do anything. Uh, hopefully, this continuation of this tragic story with, it seems like a specific type of person does this every time. 
And there seems to always be, you know, with the, it's early reports, so I don't want to jump to any conclusions. Yeah, but yeah. once again, another person who had every signal out there. And every signal. Every signal is like blaring and nobody says anything. Or if they do say anything, nothing happens. You can't take guns away from people who are obviously mentally ill. Yada, yada, yada. So mm -hmm. um, hard turn, but uh, let's get into something joyful and fun. Yeah. A little culture here. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I noticed... Uh, you know, this uh, movie Minions came out, The Rise of Gru. And uh, I've seen these Minion movies. The Minions were a character in some other movie. And so I'm peripherally uh, aware of it. But it seems to have trended. And the July 4th weekend record by the horrible 2011 Transformers Dark Side of the Moon, the worst franchise in the history of movies. <laughs> uh, I mean, Actually, I, I'm going to give you that one. I think that's accurate. Yeah. I, it really is accurate. like so horrible. Mm -hmm. And uh, th this seems to have broken the record. So it's a, a tee it up for us here, Molly. The, my son, like all the other teenagers in America, went to see this new Minions movie this weekend. And my son, like many teenagers around the world, made me take him to Target on Friday night before a holiday weekend so he could get a suit to wear to the Minions movie. Because for whatever reason, among the, the kids set, like for me... And people my age and a lot of Americans, Top Gun 2 coming out was the the yes. must-see event of the summer. But for everybody under 25, this new Minions movie is like an event. And they, I, I don't understand why, but okay. I, I don't understand why. I mean, those Minions movies are popular and they're like a ride at Disneyland, I think, and they, whatever. But they are so excited to go to this thing that they're going out and buying suits. And there they became this like huge meme the the music is really hip like there are all of these things around it but kids are dressing up in suits and going to see it and it is just a whole entire thing right that seems to have really found life on tiktok with these twin themes i think right the suits mm. and also the theme song okay and to just put a a, a, a number to this 125.1 million during open weekend so it's smashed by 10 million you know almost eight percent or something uh, the previous record, again, by the horrible Transformers Dark Side of the Moon, uh, unwatchable films. Um, so this, I, I think, just, would not have, have lot happened of feelings if it about wasn't. These Transformers I do. Movies. I'm just, I, I, I'm very, very annoyed by those movies. Uh, it's just to spend all that money and achieve so little, uh, to me, is just... This is offensive. It's offensive. It's amazing. It really wow. is, too. And to just do it over and over again, it's almost like they're taunting us. They're like, this, this film's still going to make money. People are still going to go see it, and we're going to spend even more money making and marketing of it, and it's just even worse than the last it's one. It's like every incremental iPhone drop. Anyway, I did not mean to derail you. It's just amazing, the level of, like, vitriol for the Transformers just, movies. I, to be honest, I'm displacing the other <laughs> Fair. <laughs> challenges Fair. in my life on Transformers. <laughs> Apologies to the cast and crew um, of that disaster. Josh Duhamel, you're great. Anyway. Uh, but anyway, this set a massive record, and I think it seems to have been driven. Like, this record would not have been hit if it wasn't for the TikTok trending. So this story mm -hmm. has many layers, but they do a lot of marketing around Minions. So they were doing all this crossover advertising, but there seems to have been two things that have set this out. And it really is worth studying because the first thing is Mr. Beast decided to do this. Now, I don't know if he was the first person to, you know, dress in a suit and go, but Mr. Beast has a massive following. Uh, and... He really is driving culture. When he does something, mm -hmm. I mean, my the fact that I met Jimmy a couple of times and I'm friendly with him and I told my daughters I know him, especially my six-year-olds, they just can't believe it. You know, like they're just, you, you, you know Mr. Beast? Yeah. And he's really driving a lot of commerce with the, um, now he's got a chocolate bar, Beastables or something, uh, and or Feastables, I'm not sure what it's called, but supposedly these things are doing really well. And venture capitalists are now, to, to bring it back to this week in startups, Molly, venture capitalists are now looking at influencers and saying, hey, how do you build a business around this person? Uh, and I think that Beastables, is it Feastables or Beastables? Beastables. Yeah. He has Mr. Beast burgers, and then he has Feastables, F like yeah. Frank. Yeah, I think the burger thing didn't do as well, but that was like his first warm up to it. But there's a venture capital studio that kind of came up with Beastables, put money into it. I think actually Alexis Ohanian is the investor behind it. And so, like, this is an offshoot of the Mr. Beast brand. So he can basically make a chocolate, you know, uh, candy company out of this. And apparently he had a big impact on this. 
buying out the bid or everybody goes in suits. I don't, why are they all wearing suits to this? Is it a they, sign of respect? No, it's because, well, Gru, the character, is uh, always wearing a suit. Got and it. And I okay. think it actually started, I mean, what Mr. Beast, I think, is amazing at is spotting a trend and amplifying it. So this somehow had started, I think, in Australia. And, you know, kids were already posting pictures of themselves and, and TikToks of, you know, people pulling up to the theater in these suits with, in particular, this Yeet song. Got it. As the sound. And then that video, the, the, the original, you know, this like Australian kid who posted a video of these 20 plus guys pulling up to a theater in full suits, according to this Twitter thread that digs into kind of the multi-layered success of all this. The creator posted this video. The Yeet song was the sound. That video got 35 million views. Whoa. Ho Highlights reposted it to their page. That was it. Like, then it was off. And then, at, you know, at some point, then Mr. Beast comes in, and then it's just like, and we have Supernova. So the Rich Minion sound has been used 136,000 times. So that means people who are making a TikTok chose to use that as their soundtrack in just a very short period of time. Yep. There's been... 8 billion views to the Minions hashtag, which is crazy. Uh, and Mr. Beast renting out an entire theater to watch Minions got 6 million views. And, and a lot of this also happened on YouTube and generated 15,000 comments. So here is the, oh, here's the, you can listen to the hook of that song. Okay, so it's the Minions rapping with somebody. <laughs> I count money. And it, there's money in, involved in it. So it just sounds like every other generic hip hop song from the last 10 years. <laughs> I count money, whatever, except the minions are counting money too. <laughs> People love those freaking minions. I mean, this is just like, I mean, there is something, I, will, I don't want to get you started on TikTok, but there is something special about TikTok specifically. Like yeah. things don't spread like this on YouTube. You know, they spread, there's virality, obviously, well, but there is something about these layers of marketing and it seems like the minions team or whoever uh, was the sony i can't even remember what studio it is took advantage it's, of this like it's, they, two, it's two things smaller. they may have paid people for sure yeah. startups need a central hub to store information and collaborate on work more than ever especially when you have remote teams that's why you need to move to a right first culture any best practice any project should be written down in one place we went fully remote back in March of 2020, and Notion became our internal knowledge bank. Now, we use it for external purposes. You can go to thisweekinstartups.com slash checklist to check one of the many ways we're using it externally. We took our 100-point founder checklist, which we made for the podcast, and we made for our founders. And you know what? We said, why don't we share this with everybody? This is like a book for free on Notion, and you can take it, copy it to your Notion. You can write notes on it. And that's the magic of Notion. They have great templates. It puts everybody on the same platform and it just accelerates your efficiency. When new people join your company, they go to Notion and they see all the projects going on and they quickly get up to speed. It's changed everything. So here is your call to action. Go to Notion.so and get addicted like the rest of us. Use the promo code TWIST. You're going to get $250 off their annual plan. Notion.so and use the promo code TWIST during checkout for $250 off. Thanks to the Notion team for making a great product that we love and enjoy every day. There's two things unique to the, to, you know, as a product feature. So there are two product features that are driving this and, and why TikTok is so successful at this kind of virality. Mm -hmm. Number one is they pick your feed for you. So on YouTube, you subscribe to content and they suggest stuff to you, certainly in the sidebar or on your homepage, but they're not saying, hey, here are all the most popular things. Show it to you first, right? So it's not like, the, the algorithm uh, and your default, right? We always mm -hmm. say defaults matter in product design. So the default being we're going to curate what you see means that TikTok's algorithm can specifically say, you know what? Minions is taking over. Everybody has to experience Minions. Right. The They've got this Molly, for you page that's literally, I again, I'm scared to say it, but it's cultural programming. It's like, this is it's the hot new thing. You, 100%. And phase, but the thing is like, Twitter has trends, YouTube has hot videos, like they all they have, have the explore tab. Yes, it some would be kind of promo of page like this, but TikTok just is really good at it. Well, no, it's that they default to it. And probably also they're good at it. Oh, they do. Mine doesn't. Yeah, you, you're defaulted to your for you. Uh, your feed is Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. I am. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it's confusing because you would think for you would <laughs> be your subscriptions, right? Right. So there's like the two tabs. What it turns out is for you is like, 
we, this is what we think. We prepared this for you. <laughs> right. So imagine if when you opened up Twitter, it took you to the uh, trending topics mm -hmm. tab, not who you follow, just the trending topics. Imagine on YouTube, if you went to the explore tab, and they just showed you the top trending videos. And you then the second piece of this puzzle is, you know, that's those sound clips that you can make a video to right. your butt one click to get this to create the sound, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's one click, maybe two, to create a video with that sound in the background. What this does is, it would be it's sort of like the re the quote retweet button, uh, right. but much more powerful. And so you know how quote retweets on Twitter are getting super popular, like, it's almost like the quote retweet is kind of like the it's real sophisticated way to, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's the most sophisticated part of the Twitter art form. It's kind of like that, where you can just pile on and that's when 100,000 of these get made in three days, right? Yeah. Also, the fact that the videos are very short, and the experience is very short, means you're consuming so much more. So a YouTube video, maybe you watch for 30, 60, 90 seconds, people flip through TikToks, they must the average TikTok must be five to 10 seconds before people flip to the next one. And sometimes they watch longer ones. So but the the, the third piece of the puzzle is something that's existed for a long time, Molly, and I was um, in Hollywood uh, last weekend for my friend's birthday party and number it's a very small birthday party, but there were a number of celebrities there. One of them was uh, a woman named Suki Waterhouse. Mm -hmm. And she uh, was an it girl, an actress, a musician. And she was telling me one of her mm -hmm. older songs from like seven years ago. I was like, hey, well, she knows who I am. I, I've met her before. Hey, what's going on in your world? What's going on in your world? And she said, you know, it was really interesting, Jake out my <laughs> uh, feed uh, on TikTok went crazy because, uh, you know, somebody clipped uh, a song from seven years ago. And now all of a sudden that song is trending. So what happened here was they made the hook for this minions. And now that's almost like creating a meme. So the hook and the sound sample is now being made in a preemptive way. And yeah. there is literally on Sirius XM, a channel, I'm a subscriber to Sirius XM because of Howard Stern. And I hear this promotion all the time, they have TikTok radio. So they're yep. literally taking, you know, you hear these little samples, you know, caught a vibe, uh, you know, by Willow. And then they actually play the full song. And you're like, Oh, wow, that's a pretty good song. But the hook is but a small part of it. And I was talking to a number of very high profile celebrities. And one of them is a musician, I won't say who um, was talking about how there is a project to deconstruct all the biggest hooks in history, and understand how those hooks became popular, essentially, mm -hmm. like uh, reverse engineering this stuff. And it turns out there's this harmonic uh, uniqueness that is a factor. So the song This is America mm -hmm. in this one study. So there's people in school, you know, universities and research projects to study hooks. And it turns out if you're playing, you know, GCD chords, popular chords, those songs are in the lower part of the Billboard top 100 charts, but the top charts have some unique chord structure that is different in a, in a harmonic way. And it turns out the number one song for like this harmonic, I've got the second word, it's harmonic something. Surprise. Harmonic surprise. <laughs> Pretty si simple. Okay, and so here is the harmonic surprise. You'll hear the first part of This Is America, and then when you hear it get kind of weird and unique to your ear, that's a harmonic surprise. Yeah. This is America. Don't get you slipping now. So I guess that is super surprising to people when they hear it. Um, and that's what makes a great hook. And I think that's what stops you, Molly, in your For You feed. Mm -hmm. As you hear something unique, you stop. And people are customizing music now to have those drops, like those moments, whatever it is. The, yes. you know. I mean, yep. they, you start with the hook and then work backwards to the song now. As opposed right. to, you know, you have a song, you may have a couple of chords. I've heard a bunch of interviews with songwriters, you know. They, they sometimes start with a hook, sometimes they have a verse, sometimes they have a chord structure. But now there and there is a, a seminal study on this, we'll put it in the notes, just studying all of these hooks over time. And then there were it, it, you, you don't necessarily have to have this harmonic surprise, there were also things that just sounded different as an entire genre. So it turns out Nirvana uh, was one of those things. And Nirvana was very influenced Kurt Cobain, rest in peace was influenced by either the Pixies or uh, the band that sings zombie. 
Oh, is that pen? cranberries? The cranberries. It was either it was that sort of. They both kind of have yeah some. They, they of both that. had that like mm-hmm. kind of grungy sound that really influenced Kurt Cobain reportedly, and so there you have it, folks. Uh, I think that's. It's also uh, by the way, I did see um, I did see Top Gun Maverick. <gasps> uh, Finally, and, yes, it is a and? masterpiece. It is a masterpiece. It is I'm so a literal glad I was like worried that all I the really, buildup was gonna mean it was a letdown for you, but it's so great. <laughs> I, you know, it's just like a perfectly structured summer film. It's a perfect movie. Like it has just it hits all the notes. The acting's amazing. The action's amazing. The dialogue is compelling. The acting is great um, and um, very cathartic. You know, at a number of moments, and uh, the Val Kilmer stuff. I won't spoil it. Was also very touching, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, just great all around. And I didn't cry, um, but I was having allergies that cry. day. Yeah, I was having allergies. So when the movie ended, I did um, have to rub my eyes because of the allergies, Molly. Uh, <laughs> and just my daughter was like, are you crying? I was like, no, like, my no. allergies hit right at the end. Uh, mm-hmm. But yes. Just right at, that's so weird that they kicked in right at the end there. Yes. It was yeah, in, in a, a theater of all places. What a weird time. Me. I mean, usually, you know, they should really probably look at their HVAC system in that theater. Exactly. Absolutely. That can't be happening. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. It's wonderful. It was the Pixies, by the way, and I'm so freaking happy to hear that because I love the Pixies. I had to look up the Nirvana influence. Pixies. Yeah, you wouldn't uh, you yeah. wouldn't necessarily think that. Um, so uh, congratulations to <laughs> TikTok, I guess. It still doesn't mean mm-hmm. I don't want to ban TikTok. Uh, and it still doesn't mean uh, that there are not huge problems with this. The, the press has run away with the TikTok story, as you know. Um, a member of the FCC, who we might have on the podcast, has asked for TikTok to be removed from the stores because it's becoming clear when you look at this and what could be done to, to, to break a box office record with the algorithm. Now think, so we had this you know big buildup here of how influential TikTok is mm-hmm. and how this whole generation, their behavior, what they do this weekend. Now imagine, I don't know, a foreign actor like China wanted to influence culture in the United States. And let's say they had an issue like the Russians did gun control, abortion, race, all of the things that we are, uh, as Americans, struggling with, right? And are also, in terms of issues, you know, not uh, energy independence, not global warming, not education, not the economy, things that people might say are more important, uh, or, you know, have a bigger impact, and are more existential, right? Mm -hmm. They can basically take the wounds we have and just rub salt in them. So which is exactly Russia's playbook. That's what they did explicitly during 2016. So now TikTok has that ability. Will they use it? Are they using it? You know, we can have that debate, but should they have the ability to do that? Yep. I mean, I don't know if you want to have that debate right now. Sure. But. Let's do it. Quick Mike mini debate. Okay, you've heard me talk about our Show Us Your Space giveaway over the past couple of Squarespace ad reads, right? Basically, we ran a contest. We asked you, our audience, to submit your most beautiful website for a chance to win a thousand bucks. Well, we featured some of the best submissions here on This Week in Startups, and we had so many great entries that today we did the hard job of picking a winner. I'm happy to announce, drum roll please, Dial App, a mental health app focused on Gen Z. It's built by Jonah Salita. Salita, I hope I pronounced your name correct. And uh, congratulations. Check out the product at dialapp.com. D-I-A-L-L-A-P-P.com. And it looks beautiful, right? You know why it looks beautiful? Because they built it on Squarespace. Of course, you know, Squarespace is the best place to build a beautiful website. And they have amazing templates. You knew that. You've known that for a decade. What you may not realize is that they have amazing e-commerce functionality. Whether you're selling content or a physical object in the real world, they're optimized for mobile. They have incredible SEO built in, incredible 24-hour support. We're huge fans of Squarespace over here. They've been our longest running continuous partner on This Week in Startups. For that, I thank them. Thank you so much. And don't forget, you can get 10% off at squarespace.com slash twist by using the promo code twist. Go to squarespace.com slash twist and use that promo code twist, please. Yeah, I mean, the mini version of that is that Everything you've described is what happens on Facebook and Twitter Yep. and not, at least for me, on TikTok. Like TikTok's for you page gives you things based on what you're into Mm -hmm. legitimately, not this thing is trending that is going to make you angry or Mm -hmm. you should join this group that's going to make you upset, which is what happens on Facebook and Twitter, which I think is actually why and Frank and also on YouTube. 
And you see TikTok having this incredible rise because for many people, they actually perceive it as more fun and yes. less divisive. Yes. And mine, my For You page didn't have any minions on it because it knows that all I want is huskies and cute animals. <laughs> and that is why I love TikTok. But seriously, like, yeah. so when I see those stories, I think to myself, Facebook's PR team is doing a great job because what Facebook yeah. would like and YouTube would like is the re re reciprocity, not to protect Americans, to make money in that huge ass market. Well, I don't think they'll ever get reciprocity. So I think the reciprocity. I don't think so either. But that is the core of what everybody suddenly herring. seems to be asking for. And I think yeah. it's either a red herring or an effective PR device by these other companies that are losing to TikTok. I, you know, I, I don't think that the so Facebook how about the just world... make us happier instead <laughs> of make us sadder, and then you could beat TikTok without having to plan all these stories about how the CCP is programming us. I th I do think TikTok has figured out a, an alternate route um, instead of using outrage mm -hmm. and these you know things that divide us as the way to get engagement. They figured out joy, fun, dancing, etc. It's um, like Monsters Inc. when they figure out that you can power the world with laughs and not screams. <laughs> Spoiler alert talking, for those of you. As long as we're talking seen. kids' movies. <laughs> well, so here's the thing. I think uh, both of these things can be true at this, or all three things can be true at the same time. Absolutely. Facebook could be uh, trying to undermine TikTok, and TikTok could be doing good stuff today that is fun and joyful. And literally, that has been. Um, I they were on. Uh, uh, one of the Sunday shows defending themselves and said, listen, you know, we just open up the app, use it, you'll see it's just all joy. There's no political stuff there. Some people do post political stuff, but it generally doesn't trend and nobody cares. Um, and so we don't show more of it. Mm -hmm. Should they have and then the third thing that is true is should they have that power? And should reciprocity be a key, um, you know, operating principle on communications platforms? And I think it should. So all three of these things you could actually agree on. Facebook is horrible and Twitter for, you know, rubbing salt in the wounds and, and using outrage as their way to trend stuff. TikTok has found an alternate of outrage, which is joy and fun and creativity. And the Russians could be secretly plotting to have <laughs> this as a secret weapon, which is what I actually think I you know, don't put it past them. Yeah. Psyops and having control of another I group citizens. Even know if they need it. I just don't even know if they need TikTok at this point. But yes. I mean, those, it's, it's those with facilities, a, this high definition, the note, he just nailed it. Those with facilities set up for screams will always fight for market share. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, I, I still think it should be kicked out and then let the other platforms or let another platform emerge to, you know, use the same basic structure I of here's a video, here's a sound, now make something creative around the sound. Uh, that's my last yep. take on it. But yeah, this harmonic... Um, the Surprise. harmonic structure is something that I think is going to be really interesting in terms of AI. I think AI, this is something where, what's the AI? We know GPT-3. Is it GPT-3? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it is. Something like that. Um, I always know, end up in the Gary Payton. Anyway, it's something close to that. Yes. So anyway, the, the one for, you know, basically doing dialogue, that's working relatively well. Now there's the Dolly one that is doing images. That's really well. The next piece that's going to drop is not like beating a video game it's going to be creating a hook. So you'll have AI that will be able to create better hooks than humans. And then that AI, some human will sing the words the AI tells them to sing, or they will then create a version of, you know, God forbid, Kurt Cobain singing a hook. And then they could literally come up with five songs that Kurt Cobain could potentially have written and with hooks and you know then it's sort of game over for the music industry or game on for the music industry for humans game over for humans yeah so this uh frontiers in.org uh the paper that if you want to look it up what to expect when unexpected becomes expected harmonic surprise and preference over time in popular music key takeaway previous work demonstrates that music with more surprising chords tend to be perceived as more enjoyable than music with more conventional harmonic structures Sicko mode by Travis Scott and Drake also uh, had that. It's so funny because I have ha I have a playlist called Awesome Key Changes because I am I have always been aware of my highly uh, susceptible my high susceptibility to musical manipulation. Like every moment, I, there was some tweet one time that was relevant to the fact that I've created this because every time you have a song with an awesome key change, mm. you get all fired up. Like yeah. no doubt about. It. In fact, all fired up by Pat Benatar good yeah. keychain song 
Um, but I remember somebody tweeted one day and it was like, every time I thought that I'd had a religious experience or moment of transport listening to music, I realized it was actually just an awesome key change. I'm like, that's right. I'll share my Spotify list with you. It's got a lot of a lot of good ones. All right. Speaking of TikTok and potential growth, according to the Financial Times, TikTok has canceled maybe hmm. because Facebook's PR machine is working. <laughs> has canceled plans to expand its new live e-commerce platform platform in Europe and the U.S. after struggling to gain traction in the U.K. It's called TikTok Shop. This is actually extremely common in China that there will be these live streams, much like the Twitch streams that we, you know, are familiar with, but where people stream for a long time. But what they're doing is selling. It's like QVC. And the commerce venture is called TikTok Shop. It's active in Asia and the U.K. And it is much like a TikTok version of QVC. Evidently, though, when it launched in the UK last year, it failed to meet engagement targets and some influencers actually dropped out of the program. An anonymous TikTok employee spoke to the Financial Times and said the market just isn't there yet. General consumer awareness and adoption are still low and nascent, which I think is kind of interesting. I think in the West, my theory on this is that in the West, we want our constant uh, upselling and marketing to be more subtle. <laughs> Like yeah. we don't want it to be so on the nose. <laughs> there were, I mean, there's a group of people who really enjoyed QVC. I think mm -hmm. people who had a lot of free time who enjoyed shopping, unboxing experiences. Uh, Amazon copied this as well. It just seems like maybe Americans are too busy to sit there and watch a video about a product one after the other sequentially and then buy it. And they just like, you know, maybe there's other modalities that work better, like but- not too busy judging from our social media consumption, but I, but maybe this idea of a stream that just is like to sell you stuff is yeah. a, a niche here. It's just not our, hmm. it's not the jam. I don't know. I think it's really interesting. I think there's an opportunity here. Like if Marquise um, from that YouTube channel, mm -hmm. uh, MK, Marquez, sorry, Marquez uh, yeah, if Marquez did this uh, on his YouTube and he said, here are my top 20 products or peripherals that you don't know about go buy them because mm -hmm. I'll watch him sometimes uh, and he'll influence my purchasing, I guess. Um, right. If you like but something. They, but see what I mean? It's more like, it's more round. It's not just, here's a thing, buy it. It's review based. It's a trusted recommendation. Yes. This is sort of like the way it works in China. I did a, um, I interviewed this person who did a documentary about this in China and how common it is. And it's all about the influencer. There's not a review thing necessarily. It's just like, you really like this person. They tell you to buy stuff, you buy it, and then you give them tips while you watch their live stream. It's just super hmm. transactional. Yeah. Whereas I think the model that's been more popular in the US and the UK is more, I, I don't know, it's like Web quality research? oriented, it's research, right? It's more CNET yeah. than it is QVC. I don't, it's just interesting that- Yeah, I'm interested why this doesn't work culturally work. here. Mm -hmm. Or um, the UK. I mean, that's where it failed yeah, the first, UK causing them failed. to not want to. It seems like it's a uniquely your aunt and your grandmother watching QVC and buying, like, what are those little figurines they buy and they put on shelves, the collectible stuff? You oh, know what I'm humble, talking about. Hum like, humble, hum humble, humble, hubbles, hubble? Whatever they are. Yeah, like this one, <laughs> there's like all kinds of the different little ones. figurines. Little figurines and they collect them and... You know, somebody goes on there and says, isn't this incredible look? It's got this like unique feature. Yeah, it's kind of like NFTs. Like if they did this for NFTs, that'd be kind of cool. Get Gary Vaynerchuk <laughs> and like somebody else to just sit there and talk about NFTs. And there's like a hundred of them available. It's like kind of NFTs is this, right? They do a drop. It actually a little bit. And there's a certain this, yeah. number of them. So maybe like the drops are kind of like in sneakers, you have drops. So it's a limited supply of things combined with a video combined with an influencer. But the thing that doesn't seem to resonate here is the video part. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, okay, humble well, gifts. Can Those you believe it? I forgot looking. about these creepy little bastards. Oh, God, man. Hummel. Right in the garbage. Like, this Blech. is what happens. Grandma dies. God forbid. You're arrested. This grandma. legitimately is. And then somebody is... goes to their house and they're like, where's our inheritance? What did grandma do with all the money? And there's like 300 of these figurines. These all unboxed, uh, you know, on the shelves, boxed, whatever. Which are still yeah. going for like hundreds of dollars okay i'm down the rabbit hole here i'm pulling out yeah. pull out pull out Masterclass is the best way to learn from world-class instructors at the top of their fields i love this product i have a subscription to it my wife and i use it we love it there's amazing courses there including my pal the greatest shooter of all time steph curry 
teaching you shooting, ball handling, and scoring. I'm actually going to start taking that class because there's a basketball court here up in Tahoe, and I'm going to start running some pickup games. And I want to learn how to catch that ball, cock it into the right spot, get up on my toes, and boom, have that Steph Curry form. And I'm going to learn that at Masterclass. That's the only place Steph Curry teaches it. And I just watched Chris Voss. He's the former FBI lead hostage negotiator. He's got a best-selling book. Well, he has a course on Masterclass that's even better than his best-selling book. And the world-class production value, they spend so much money producing this stuff that it's just a joyful thing to watch. And, and the lessons are about, you know, 10, 15 minutes. So you get a busy schedule, you drink a cup of coffee. Why not do something for yourself to improve yourself? And uh, you can get unlimited access to every Masterclass. I kid you not. You just make one decision. Masterclass is the best. I'm going to subscribe to it. I'm going to invest in myself. You make that one decision, you have access to all these classes. Think about how much you can learn. So as a twist listener, they're going to give you 15% off an annual subscription. That's a great deal. I want you to go to masterclass.com slash startups, masterclass.com slash startups, and you can get 15% off a masterclass annual membership, which is completely worth it. I pay for it myself and I did long before they ever considered advertising gear because I love the product. Well, speaking of China, um, you know, everybody knows Taiwan is the world leader in chip manufacturing. And that, you know, we saw during the supply chain, if we don't get semiconductor, uh, if, the, if these semiconductors and these chips don't ship, mm -hmm. well, then you can't get a car because it's waiting for a chip and you can't get an appliance, et cetera. And obviously, these chips go into military, uh, aircraft, weapons, systems, et cetera. They're, they're in everything. And so as part of this, you know, we did a chips act. And maybe you could just... Uh, refresh our memory on all of this, Molly, and we did, why this yes. is super important. Right. So as we know from the pandemic, this global semiconductor shortage affected prices for everything and really put the spotlight on the fact that the U.S. has virtually zero, hmm. possibly actually zero manufacturing capability for chips in the United States. So there have been plans for a global expansion. Uh, Intel was talking about uh, breaking ground on a facility in Ohio. Um, lots of other chip makers were, well, I guess there aren't even lots of other chip makers, but there have been efforts to try to bring chip manufacturing to the U.S., including actually Taiwan Semiconductor Company. Yes. Uh, TSMC was saying it was going to open a plant here with the aid of this CHIPS Act, a big bill that would provide $52 billion in incentives Yes. to chip makers to set up shop in the United States. Uh, it promises tax breaks and other incentives. Unfortunately, two things happened. One, the bill didn't actually include funding. It was these tax breaks and other incentives, and the chip makers would prefer money to hmm. establish manufacturing here. The second thing that is happening is that this bill is being held up currently because uh, Mitch McConnell hmm. said he would block it related to a budgeting bill being put forward by the Democrats that included price cuts on prescription drugs and I think the rollback of some tax cuts, some, some budget Got it. So priorities it's basically that caught he in was the crossfire not into. Now. It's caught in the crossfire. And so these now chip makers are saying, well, we're not going to expand to the U.S. What's interesting, there was a good Bloomberg piece, actually, that was an opinion piece. Um, if you guys can drop that in here, I think I put it in our chat earlier. That was yeah, we'll basically that saying, like, yeah. everybody's shooting themselves in the foot here. Congress yeah. is effing around with this yep. in the just the most nakedly political way possible. Hmm. But also, these companies have the money to do this, right? Like, right. get some financing. I mean, pay for your own <laughs> chip facilities, <laughs> considering yeah. that you just lost a ton of business or had all these problems as a result of this global supply chain. And so what this Bloomberg piece pointed out was, like, it sort of feels like nobody is very serious about this. And if I'm being honest, I spoke not that long ago at an event, like the the Silicon Valley, like the Chip Trade Association event, and it seemed pretty clear that nobody actually wanted to pay hmm. for the expansion into the U.S. And that it's so much harder and more expensive than they're of making course. it out to seem. Like you can't just pop up a fab facility. It's like NASA. Yeah, it, like, this is hard work. It's, it's expensive. Incredibly to do hard. And the CHIPS Act, creating helpful incentives to produce semiconductors for America. You know, if we do not provide the incentives, South Korea is a very viable location. Uh, Europe is providing some serious incentives. And so, you know, in a global capital capitalistic market, of course, people are going to 
uh, just go to where the cheapest and fastest solution is. Now that has mm -hmm. been China and Taiwan, but these things take, you know, five, 10 years to get up and running to get up, competitive. Yeah. It's not this is not like, I don't know, you know, opening up a Starbucks, obviously, this is, you know, takes a lot of forethought and a lot of investment. And so I think we have to reframe how we look at this, how we look at energy independence, um, you know, the and the supply chain around pharmaceuticals. So if we just take those three, Molly, this, I, this is what I've been thinking about all weekend. So thinking about, you know, where is America very strong? And where are we actually weak? Right. And, you know, I, I did this tweet like, hey, still the best country in the world. And of course, you know, that created a lot of debate. We have issues that we can, you know, having a really hard time seeing eye to eye on abortion, gun control, social justice. I mean, pick anything, race. Well, race, it's but I put that under social justice, but those manufacturing, three, globalization, yeah. like, right. Mm -hmm. So, but no, no, now we put those, uh, though, there's a, those uh, energy independence supply chain and pharmaceuticals, I think everybody in America agrees, we want to have those be uh, independent of dictatorships, right? We don't want to be dependent on Russia or Saudi Arabia for oil. We don't want it to be dependent on a dictatorship in China for our chips or pharmaceuticals. We can all agree on those. Those 90 plus percent of Americans are like, yeah, we should be able to make our, you know, drugs here, we should be able to, you know, build nuclear, solar, whatever, be energy independent here. And we should, you know, have not have this dependency on chips and high tech manufacturing, we should put those in a different bucket. And the bucket is kind of where we have defense, where we're not having big debates about defense, right? We want to have a strong military, we want to be protected and safe. This is where I think we should move these categories into of discussion national security to, mm -hmm. is national security. Yep. If you take them out of the bickering we have around race, um, uh, abortion and gun control, which will those will never end. Those debates are so, you know, um, polarizing. But I don't see them. Ending. Chips aren't even in that debate, though. Chip, this is purely. Well, no, but this one is being held up on other budgetary constraints. If we just put them into the military bucket, took money from the military to fund those things, and said, energy independence is a military issue. Let's take some money from the military. Anybody would say, well, that makes sense. We don't have to go to a war with Russia, if we are in energy independent, we won't have to go to war with China if we're independent and Taiwan, right? Of but clearly, none of your homies are in the military industrial complex, because plenty of people would say no to that, including most likely these big chick tip companies, because I guarantee you that deep down inside Intel does not want to manufacture chips in the United States, because you know why it's bad for profit. It is too expensive. Yeah, fundamental full stop. It is yeah. too expensive and too complicated for any mm. of these companies to set up manufacturing in the United States. And they're not going to. And they're not going to do it without the CHIPS Act. And the CHIPS Act is not going to pass because Congress can't do, Congress doesn't do stuff like this. Like there is a universe in which we could make it part of a national defense budget, but it would cut into the profits of these companies. It would also mean that like TSMC probably couldn't manufacturer for the United States because they would find some security flaw and reason like well, that it's not no, safe. I think like, Taiwan, they would they would they're they're actually Taiwan is opening a plant here. So we see Taiwan with TSMC as a an ally and somebody to get right, to but if to it was part support. of national defense budgeting, then that would well, be a different conversation. I, I'm not just saying it's strictly um, you know, you have to take it from the national defense budget. But if we just framed it, we right. thought about it as right. being in that vertical sort and of we should. We a hundred percent I agree so, with you. We as Americans need to and the politicians, I think this gives them a free pass, basically, move this stuff over and make it non polarizing. We must have drugs, we must have, uh, you know, pharmaceuticals, we must have um, energy independence, and we must have chips. And it is a, you know, this is a sovereignty issue, this being dependent, we're seeing what being dependent on Russia has done to Germany, and us being energy independent, we, we don't talk about this, but our country is, you know, a net exporter. Now we're largely independent yeah. of these issues, even yeah. though our gas prices have gone up, we're, we're in good shape. <laughs> Germany's like, actually wondering if they're going to be able to have enough, they're, they're going to have heat this winter. Mm -hmm. Like they've got existential issues. We don't have existential issues anymore. With energy, we do have right. existential issues with pharmaceuticals and chips. The good news there's other places that are democracies that want this business. If we screw this up, it's going to go to South right. Korea. It's going to go to Europe, and that's fine. It, mm -hmm. Those those democracies are high functioning, and we can buy chips from them. If those are cheaper solutions, it's fine. But I thought it, the framing is something 
that we could unblock a lot of our thinking. You know, if we take education and take it out of, and if you looked at education as a national security issue, yeah. I know. I mean, there really is, you're absolutely immigration, right. Immigration, national such, security issue. A, there's such an opportunity for an administration, almost certainly not this one, no. to market all of these issues, to lump them together and say, yeah. You know, if we want to remain the strongest, and and frankly, actually, that is what South Korea quite specifically has been doing for several yeah. decades. And the first investment they made is in education to yeah. be and stay a strong com country. And immigration falls under this. So now you have education, immigration could fall under this rubric on this framing, this way of contextualizing the issue. So we don't have to fight about it. We don't, Republicans and Democrats fight over everything. They don't have to fight over education. They don't have to fight over immigration in these two verticals. If we don't have scientists, if we don't have technologists, and if we don't let people immigrate and stay here after they get their PhDs and masters and high tech, you know, um, jobs, we should just carve that out. That's I've talked about it on this show before. That's recruitment, recruiting, that's drafting, that is like the NBA scouting, mm -hmm. we should look at that differently than immigration coming across the border immigration, you know, um, you know, people coming here for asylum because they're, you know, uh, face, you know, something horrible in their own country. Th that's separate than recruiting talented people so that we remain secure as a country, national security issues. Anyway, there you have it, folks. Yeah. That's my little <laughs> rant and pivot. Love it. Love it. That's a perfect way, I think, to come out of the fourth, the fourth weekend. Yeah, I was just, I was thinking about America. That's all. This is America. Like, this is, you know, things that we can all, what can we agree on is a great starting point for um, resolving issues. Once mm -hmm. you have what we can agree on, if we agree on those five major topics, okay, uh, gun control, all right, yeah, this is gonna be hard. Oh, abortion, this is super hard. Okay, race, reparations, social justice, okay, this is hard. But at least we have you know, a, a foundation of things that we work on together, politicians, states, the citizens of this great country that make you feel like we're making progress. Like if we were, um, getting nukes set up here, if we were recruiting the top scientists around the world, if we could be, you know, energy independent, oh mm -hmm. my God, and semiconductor independent, supply chain independent, it would just make Americans feel a greater sense of pride, I think. Yep. Um, and if, you'd feel safer, right? Uh, you'd feel less anxiety. Yeah. As a, as a country. Maybe. All right, there you have it, folks. That's my little <laughs> rant, <laughs> right, my rant in the YouTube. I love it. I would also like, you know, Human rights for women and girls, but we can still work on those. <laughs> yes, so we can still work on those. I'm trying to take. I'm just stuff saying, off when you say table. safer and less anxiety, the semiconductors are not quite as big a deal for me right this minute. However, I do understand that the long term if, economic certainty, economic uncertainty, and division is what causes what makes it way easier for social issues to crop up and tear us apart. So yes. my my theory is like the social issues are how. This is super cynical, but I think a lot of politicians are using these social issues as like wedges to get people to come out and vote. Of course they are. And they always, to me, the it's whole plan. just gross. You know, I want to see a politician get up there. I want to see them get up there and say, listen, we can all agree on this. We, we don't want to have smarter kids. We all have kids. We, we, we all want the next generation to be smarter. We want to be competitive on the global stage. Let's just agree that we're going to invest like maniacs in this country for STEM, we're gonna go mm -hmm. crazy. We're gonna get, we're gonna have more people in graduate school for science, technology, engineering, and math than any country. Yep. Like if I run for president Gosh. or if I ran for governor, that would be my platform. I'm gonna make things more fun. I'm gonna make everybody smarter. Uh, the end. I think I could win on that platform for governor I mean, of California. seriously, yes. I am in for this. Let's yes. go. All right, here we go. Go right. Jason.com. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. It may be a short week, but it's not going to be short on content. That's oh for my sure. God. <laughs> tons and tons of news. Just another great show here uh, covering the news for you. If you want to join us live, don't forget youtube.com slash this week in or you can go to this week in startups.com slash YouTube, it will redirect you hopefully. We also have a Twitter community where we talk about these topics throughout the day. And the Twitter community now over 1600 people in that Twitter community, explaining to us uh, what they want us to talk about on the show and then, you know, basically double clicking on topics and helping each other with their startups, which is kind of cool. This week in startups.com slash TC. A discord is now up and running this week in startups.com slash discord. And then hit us up, hit us up at Molly Wooder at Jason for topics for conversations it's gonna be great.
We got yes. lots to say. So do you. We want to hear from you. Producer let's, all, Zach, let's all hang out. Let's all hang. I, I, I'm really thinking about real world stuff too, by the way, Molly. I'm thinking about we should do a quarterly dinner. Uh, I'll flip the bell. Uh, I'll pick up the tab. But I was thinking of quarterly dim- dinner with investors in uh, climate and renewables and sustainability uh, here in the that. Bay Area. Just do it yeah. quarterly. Uh, you know, we'll pick a nice ramen joint, something like nice and fun. It could be by you out in Oakland if you want. We do it in the East Bay. We could do it in San- maybe San Francisco is easiest, but mm-hmm, get a private mm-hmm. room and maybe 12 people who are investing in the space. We'll just have like a little get together, you know, keep it Love very it. casual. Um, and I want to do that as well uh, for early stage seed funds too, is just do like a, a quarterly dinner. So, uh, and then we're going to do start doing This Week in Startups Live. If you have ideas, producers at thisweekinstartups.com. We want to do This Week in Startups Live soon. So uh, just to meet the fans and get out there now that- yeah. uh, we're in the endemic. So we'll see you Let's tomorrow. Let's go. Let's see you go. Tomorrow. See you tomorrow.